Hello, how's it going out there today? <laughs> today is continuing with my series, Doors. This is part three. Where are the windows of heaven? Where are they? Let's start with this in Malachi, chapter three, verse 10. There are several versions. I like the ESV ones. You know, it's bring the full tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and there, thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessings until there are no more need. <laughs> Let's expand on that for a little bit. The storehouse, which is back then, was an ancient large area that stored the tithe grain into the temple. You know, storing the best 10% or more of the best of the best grains and resources. If the farmers did that with an open heart and gave the best of the best as their tithe, that God would pour out his blessings on them continually until there was no need to worry about anything in their lives. This holds true to this very day. So from the internet, and I edited this a little bit, says, what is meant by windows of heaven? The imagery of windows of heaven used by Malachi is most instructive. You know, windows allow natural light to enter into a building in a like manner. Spiritual illumination and perspective are poured out through the windows of heaven and into our lives as we honor the law of tithing. Important. What do you do in your life if, if it's through Jesus, God will pour out the enormity, the enormous amount of blessings for you. Pouring out blessings as if it was water is pouring out of heaven, the living water. The living water, quote, is a metaphor. You know, you know from, you know, basically here from the internet again, living water can be understood in various ways, but the clearest way is that living water is a symbol for salvation and a true knowledge of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. God provides us with everything we need and is the living water that continues to give to us. You know, in John 7, 37 and 38, verse 37, on the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. And, you know, once again, come to him and drink is a metaphoric, metaphorical sentence as it's his salvation that you will receive is as easy as drinking water. Your salvation could be as easy as drinking water. Verse 38, whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. You know, once again, whoever believes in him, rivers of blessings will be given to those who gives their heart to God through Jesus. You know, they will receive blessings on earth and the largest blessing that you could ever get in your whole life on earth is an open door to heaven. Going back, you know, bring the full tithe into the storehouse. You know, I know for a fact through experience that there, you know, there are different ways of tithing. Some monies, of course, give food or help those in need. Stopping and help someone stranded, maybe their car's broken down or, you know, volunteering, you know, anything, you know, through him or for him. And anything you do to others with an open heart, not expecting to be repaid or gain anything, he will pour his blessings out to you. You know, I had a blessing happen to me just the other day. My computer keyboard drives me nuts. <laughs> It's a little thing, but when you use it every day and it starts typing by itself and spells words differently just because my fingers happen to be hitting the wrong keys, you know, frustrating, <laughs> you know. So I went to a thrift store, as I've seen them there before, and voila, found two of them. I bought them both for less than eight bucks for both of them. You know, this is, e they're easily 35 to $40 each if you buy them new or online. You know, I checked out, and then as I was leaving, the cashier, the cashier yelled sort of, Sir, sir, you've left your card. You know, I turned around, and, and she gave it to me. You know, I still had shopping to do that day. The next door I started to check out was my, my card was gone. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. My card was gone. Well, where'd I put it? Couldn't find it anywhere. <laughs> I think the worst when things like that happen to me a pit in my stomach just shows up. It's like number two in my normal day life, as far as things I have to worry about, I guess. And, you know, number one is misplacing or losing my phone. I bet most of you watching today can relate to that. 
Well, I was in panic mode. <laughs> I, was, I was close to my bank, so I went there to see if I could just get a new card, you know, that I could use for every normal thing, including my business. I use it every day, that particular card. You know, I've only lost one credit card in my life that I can remember, and that was from my church. <laughs> and I was entrusted with that, and I lost it in one hour after they gave it to me. Oh my gosh, and it, you know, it was never to be found again. It was so embarrassing. <laughs> I was so embarrassed about that. You know, that's why I was sitting in my car, I'm still in panic mode, thinking about all the accounts I had to change, you know, the change or whatever. And I asked Jesus, I said, you know, Jesus, I need a little help, please. I just need a little help. <laughs> All of a sudden, a thought came soaring through my mind. Call the thrift store. Call the thrift store. I hesitated and told myself, well, that clerk gave me my card, so I couldn't have left it there. Again, my mind said, call the thrift store. Well, I called him. Very nice person answered and said, hold on, I will check. The hold was long. While crazy thoughts were just roaring through my mind, you know, and all of a sudden, yes, Mr. Jennings, we have your card. It's in lockup. Just ask for it when you get here. I couldn't believe it. Can you imagine the weight that lifted off my shoulders that very moment? I'm thanking Jesus for helping me. Help, thank you. You know, when I got to the store, I asked him how or where it was found. And he said there was this nice person that said that she found it way out in the parking lot, which I, way out in the parking lot could have been dating stores. She felt in her heart, she said to him, it belonged to a person that was at this thrift store shopping. <laughs> I about fell over in my heart. You know, I know that that's not a coincidence. When you change your heart and follow Jesus, these things will continue to happen. These are blessings that pour out from your storehouse. Believe me when I tell you it happens continuously. It happens all the time with me. You know, I'm always, you know, have enough to move on to the next day and the next day and the next day. This is where, you know, the windows of heaven are that pour out the living of water the living water basically for you, me, us. You know, we can drink continually for all, you know, all our small and big blessings every day. So where are you today with your salvation? Where are you? If you don't have salvation right now, you can get it today. It is so easy. It's like drinking water in his own word. Jesus' his own word lets anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink anyone whoever believes in me rivers of living water will flow from within them you know if you need a little help with that stay tuned that's it folks see you down the road have a great day if you have questions about recycling your heart come to the greeley vineyard church or google the vineyard usa website and find a church near you contact them and there will be someone there to help you